Hey, graphic art students. So today I'm going to be showing you guys two of your uh, options for your graphic art assessment. This is option one, and this is a mythical creature photo manipulation. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to do this. First, I'm going to go ahead and show you your example. So this is the one that I made as an example for you guys. Uh, I took pictures of five different animals and I combined them all together and I created this photo manipulation of this mythical creature. Um, mythical of course means fictional or not real and that is what I am looking for from you guys today. So you can make yours uh, beautiful, you can make yours weird or, or even scary or horrifying or you can make them funny. It is up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to do this. Okay, so I'm just kind of showing it to you up close so you can see I've got some ram's horns, I've got butterfly wings, I've got a koi fish tail, and if you look closely, there is this pattern that I got from a lionfish that I used to kind of put over the horse's uh, midsection to give it, uh, make it look like it had markings or stripes. So these are the pictures that I used, and I got them from that gallery that's available on Photopea. Here's a lionfish, and this is the ram's horn that I got the picture from the ram's horn, the butterfly wings, and here's the koi fish. The koi fish was the only one that I didn't get from the gallery on Photopea. I got this one by searching on Google for a koi fish because I couldn't find any good pictures of one in the gallery available on Photopea. So I'm going to start by manipulating the animal picture that's going to be kind of like my main body picture and it's going to be the picture of this horse. So the way I thought about this was I wanted, I know I wanted to be like a horse kind of animal. So I found a picture of a horse uh, that I could then add other parts to. I specifically chose a white horse because I knew I was going to want to add to add like some different markings to it and working with a white or light colored animal makes that process a little bit easier. So right now I'm just kind of shifting the size to get it to a, a good size that I want to start working from. And I'm going to rasterize it, which is going to allow me to cut out or erase sections of this picture. So you have to do that with any picture if you want to edit it. If you try to go in a race or um, brush over a picture and it's not rasterized, you'll get a message saying that you cannot edit the, later and, the layer and you have to rasterize it first. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the pen tool to trace around the outside section of this horse that I want to use for my photo manipulation. Okay, I've got a fill going on right here, which is kind of appearing red. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So I just have those blue path lines as I'm creating this pen trace. So this is another option that you can use if you're having trouble getting rid of the anchor by clicking Alt and then clicking that, you can use this direct path tool to adjust the direction of your pen tool rather than getting rid of the handle. So I've sped this up so you don't have to watch me kind of click all the way around this horse. You can see I'm just selecting, I'm selecting the head, the chest, the legs, and I'm going a little bit back. I'm kind of using that natural kind of curved line around his stomach to kind of be where I cut him off from the rest of the body. I'll be using that front part. So here's the part where I'm going around the mane. And I have to use a little bit of artistic guesswork to kind of determine how the shape of this hair is going to look. I don't want to go in and trace the hair exactly as it appears in the photo. That, that's going to take way too long. And it's 
not probably not going to look the way I think it's going to look. So I'm just kind of like using my artistic brain to decide what shapes this hair looks like in like a simplified version. And I'm using the pen tool to just trace those kind of like curvy triangle shapes that represent where the hair is going. So you don't have to be nearly as nitpicky as I am being right now. Um, I just kind of, you know, wanted to have some shapes that looked like the horse's mane coming out. So I kind of just picked and choose which ones that I wanted to emphasize on. Okay. All right, so I've got my shape trace all the way around and I connected it back to my original starting point. So I'm gonna zoom out now so you can see the trace that I made around the horse with the pen tool. And now I'm going to just make sure I have that pen tool selected and I'm gonna right click, make a selection and that's gonna turn that pen tool shape into a dotted line selection. You can also go to where it says select on your menu. Sorry, actually you can go, where is it supposed to be? Right, you're gonna right click on your layer and you can select pixels and that will also create a selection uh, around the shape that you just traced with the pen tool. Now is I'm going to adjust the line of my selection. Right now, if I delete this shape, it's going to be very hard, but I want it to be soft. So I'm going to choose this feather option and I'm going to change it from one to three. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the line where my selection is a little bit blurry. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm gonna select my photograph so I know that I've got that part selected and that's the part that I'm going to be clipping. And what I've just done is I've deleted the inside of the horse because that's the area that's selected. So to select the outside, I'm going to click select and inverse and then delete the background. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in and you can see the way that we feathered that line created a nice kind of soft blurry edge cut around the horse. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you in this small section between his legs right here, again, how to clip that and use the feather option to make that line soft. And I'll show you what it looks like before I use the feather option. I'll show you what it looks like when I don't use it. So I'm just using the pen tool to draw that shape. And I'm gonna make a selection and I'm gonna delete that selection from my horse picture. And if I zoom in, you'll see that the line around where I just deleted is very hard. So I'm going to do that again now. I'm going to go to Select, Modify, and Feather. And I'm going to feather it with three points again. And now if I delete it and deselect, you can look and see that line is a lot more smooth and blurry. And this is kind of the trick to making these uh, cutouts look a little bit more realistic because it's not such a hard line. It blends a little bit better when you do that. So when you feather, you might have a little bit of like a line of the background kind of still existent on your picture. And you can always go back in with the eraser tool using a soft edge eraser tool and just kind of like carefully erase the areas that you want to get rid of a little bit more of. Of course, you can always use those bracket buttons next to the P on your keyboard to make your brush or your eraser tool bigger or smaller as you're working. So you can see I can just, I'm just erasing a little part on there around his nose where I thought that that line was a little too dark still. Okay, again, this is a little nitpicky, and if you're like me and you want to make it perfect, you can do that. But as you see when you zoom out, it's really not as obvious. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is I'm just turning my horse layer off because I'm going to be working with my fish layer now because that's the second half of his body is going to be this koi fish. So the fish is kind of pointing in the opposite direction. I want his tail going the other way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this picture around so it's uh, going in the opposite direction. 
So I use the move tool and I'm going to move this fish halfway off the paper and you can tell it's halfway because of those two little squares around the border in the middle on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drag it and flip it all the way over to the other side until those two little squares at the top and bottom are matched up with the edge of the other side of the paper. And this is just helping me make sure that I'm flipping it and not stretching it out or making it a different shape or size. Okay, once I've done that, I can drag it back onto my canvas and hit enter. And that will confirm the move. So I'm just showing you one more time how I flipped it to go back in the opposite direction. All right, so now I want to cut the fish out from the background. I don't want there to be any background around that fish. And luckily, we have a fish with a white background, which is going to make this really easy to select the background and get rid of it because the magic wand tool that you just saw me select allows you to select the background if it's all one color. So I'm going to feather it again to make it a nice soft edge when I delete the background. I'm making sure that my fish layer is selected and I hit delete and that just deleted the background from my fish. So now it's the fish with no background. Just kind of showing you guys how that looks and how it cut nicely. All right, so now I'm turning my horse picture back on and I'm going to start lining these two pictures up so I can start blending them together. So as I move my horse picture over, it kind of uncovers a little bit of the background of that horse picture that I didn't delete because it was off of the canvas. So that may happen to you, in which case you can use the um, one of the selection tools to just highlight or select that area just like this. And as long as you are clicked on that picture, you can hit backspace and it will just delete that section. All right, so now I'm going to move my fish around so I can line up where I want that fish tail to be connected to my horse body. I'm turning the opacity on the fish picture down so I can kind of line it up a little bit easier by seeing that horse picture behind it. So I'm moving the picture around just using the move tool and lining things up. Kind of want that fin on the fish to line up with the back of the horse so it blends a little bit more convincingly. So while you're moving your picture, you have the option to select warp, which gives you some more of these points that you can click and drag to kind of warp and pull the selected picture in a bunch of different directions. And I'm using it to pull the fin down so it kind of curves down underneath the body of the horse like I showed you in my example. So because I was recording this while I was working in Photopea, it lagged quite a bit. So I wasn't able to get the fish body curved as much as my original example that I showed you. Uh, it was just kind of like lagging and not working as well because I had the screen recording happening at the same time. So I didn't make the curve of the back fin of that fish as dramatic as in my original example. But this is just showing you guys how I did that. Okay, just kind of pulling on all those points. Again, you'll have like these little squares that are the points that you can click and drag, and that allows you to manipulate and kind of mold that picture to make it move or curve in a direction or shape that you want. Yours won't be as slow as mine, hopefully. Again, this is just lagging quite a bit because I was recording at the same time. All right, so now that I've got a shape that I'm pretty happy with, I am now going to use the eraser tool to delete the part of the fish that I don't want to see anymore. So I'm just selecting that eraser tool from the toolbar. I'm using those bracket buttons to enlarge the eraser tool. And I have a soft edge chosen. So you see how it erases gradually with a soft edge, 
which allows me to be a little bit more specific about the area that I am erasing and allows it to blend in with that horse picture a little bit more. So I'm turning the opacity of the fish back up so I can see what it really looks like as I'm erasing it. And I'm being really careful and I'm adjusting my eraser to kind of fit inside the area that I'm trying to erase so I don't erase too much or too little. So a lot of this is mouse control and making sure that you're clicking in the areas and erasing in the areas that you intend to. If you're having difficult time doing this with a touchpad on your, uh, your Chromebook or your laptop, having a mouse really helps make your mouse movements a little bit easier to control. All right, so I'm just doing a little bit more kind of nudging just by going around with the pen or with the eraser tool and the move tool and just adjusting where this fish is kind of lining up with the horse body until I'm happy with the way it looks. All right, so now I've got my horse body and my fish tail connected together. So you'll see there's a little bit of kind of grayish area that was left behind from when I deleted the background on the fish that just didn't get deleted. So I'm just using my eraser tool to delete that area. I'm using that soft brush still, and I accidentally deleted a little bit of my fin because of that, so I'm switching to a hard tool now just to be able to more accurately erase just that one section. All right. Okay, so now I'm moving on to my next picture that I'm going to be adding. So here's my lionfish, and I picked this one specifically because I wanted to add some of these striped markings from this lionfish to my new creature. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to rasterize the picture again so I can edit and erase parts of it. So you can see that it's kind of in between those two layers, so I need to move it around so it's over both of those layers, the horse and the fish layer. So I'm just dragging those layers around in my layer window so I can organize them to be on the right part. So now I've moved the lionfish picture to be over both the fish and the horse picture. So I'm gonna be turning the opacity down so I can see the horse and the fish through this layer. And I'm not, I have to select it first, of course. I was on the wrong layer. So there you go, now the lionfish is see-through and we can see the horse and the koi fish underneath it. And now I'm using the move tool to just drag and rotate and move this lionfish around until his markings line up on the horse's body the way I want them to look. Okay, this is, you know, a time where I don't really mind if I'm stretching the picture out too much because I'm not really using the whole picture, I'm just using sections of it. So it's okay if they get a little bit stretched out. I've got that warp option on right now. So I'm warping the picture. I have a couple more points that I can click and select. So once I'm done warping, the picture of the lionfish to cover up the area of the horse that I am wanting to show those stripes on. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my layer with the horse on it. And by clicking or holding down control and clicking on the picture of the horse in the preview on the layer, that will select the part of the layer that has the horse and make a selection. So I'm going to inverse that selection. I'm gonna select my lionfish and I'm gonna hit delete and I'm going to use that feathering option to make that line softer. And by hitting delete, I can now delete the section of that lionfish picture in the shape of that horse selection. 
That makes it a little bit easier to cut out sections of other pictures in the same shape as the pictures that you're trying to overlay them with. So now I have that lionfish picture that's been cut out in the shape of my horse, and I'm just going to delete sections of it using the eraser tool until I like the way that those two, com that those two pictures combined and laid over each other looks. Again, I'm trying to make this kind of look like, I don't know, like almost like a zebra horse, but with using the stripes from a lionfish rather than a zebra. So I'm just deleting that lionfish picture around the horse's head and his eyes. I'm deleting it around where his mane is falling over his neck because I still want to be able to see the mane. And a lot of this is just kind of like, you know, deciding for myself what I want it to look like and then making artistic decisions of where to erase this lionfish picture to create that um, design. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the part off of the legs too because I think I just want these stripes to appear just kind of on the main body of the horse and have that area on like kind of his belly blend a little bit more and then I'm going to delete the part that's kind of over that koi fish because I don't think that looks very blended so I'm going to delete that part too. All right so once I'm happy with that I am going to move on to editing my next picture and combining it with this creature as I'm building it. So I didn't decide ahead of time exactly what I wanted this creature to look like. I decided that I wanted to start with a horse. I decided that I wanted it to be an aquatic animal using uh, aquatic animal parts to add to it. But I kind of didn't really have a full idea of what I wanted the finished product to look like. I started with just these three pictures and then started thinking about other parts of other animals that I could add to make it look more interesting. So I'm turning the opacity back up just to see how that looks on the fish. And it's much more uh, blended now. And I'm just erasing a little bit more of the lionfish picture to create just a little bit more of a smooth, blended look. If I see any kind of like hard lines that don't look, you know, realistic, that's where I go in with a soft eraser brush and I just start kind of erasing just a little bit here and there until it looks more blended. All right, not bad. All right, so I'm turning my ram's head picture back on. So I just decided that I was gonna use the horns from this picture. This was a really good, uh, nice detailed picture of the ram's horns. So again, I'm gonna be using the pen tool to cut out the horns from this picture and then delete the rest of the picture so I don't need to see it anymore. So, so I sped this up a little bit just to kind of show you how I traced around the shape of the horn. All right, connecting to my original point to create my shape. Right-clicking, make selection. I'm selecting the inverse because I don't want to select the horns. I want to select everything else around the horns. Using the feather option to make a nice, smooth, blended line around where I'm deleting. Making sure that I click on the picture, rasterize it because it won't let me delete it if it's not rasterized, and then hit backspace to delete everything on the outside of that selection. So now I just have my horn. And this was a black and white photograph, and the rest of my photos are colored, so I did want to add a little bit of color to this to make it a little bit more convincing. So I used the brush tool, and I, then I used the eyedropper tool to just pick up a little bit of that orange in the koi fish, and then I'm, I used the brush tool with a soft brush and I'm going to turn the opacity on that brush down so it's very light and again using a soft brush 
And I'm just gonna paint a little bit of orange over the top of this horn to give it some color. I still have it selected, so I need to uh, select the inverse to make sure the inside of that line is selected. That brush was a little bit too big, so I'm just making it a little bit smaller. And there I'm just adding a little bit of color over the top of that picture. And now I'm gonna play around with some of the image adjustment settings, which control things like brightness and contrast. And this allows you to manipulate pictures uh, to create more intense or different colors and values. So if you see, if I adjust the brightness, it gets brighter. And if I adjust the contrast, the lights get lighter and the darks get darker at the same time. So that just makes it a little bit more like it was naturally colored orange like that. So I'm just gonna de deselect that. And I'm going to use the move tool to shrink and move those horns down so they look appropriately sized to fit my creature. <clears throat> so I'm about to show you a pretty fun trick. There may be times in your photo manipulation where you need two of the same picture. For example, I don't wanna have to go and trace another horn. I already have one right here. I just need to duplicate it and reverse it. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So once I've gotten the size and the shape of the horn kind of figured out, while I have the move tool selected is how I am able to duplicate parts of area of pictures that I've selected. So I'm just zooming in so you can see this a little bit better. So I've got the move tool selected and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down the control button and that's the CTRL button. It should be located on the bottom left hand side of your keyboard. It says either CTRL or control. And while I'm holding that down, I'm going to click on this selection and drag it and you'll see a duplicate version of that picture will appear. So go ahead and watch that now. Okay, holding down control, dragging that picture and now I've got a duplicate. And you'll notice over here on my layer, when I create a duplicate, a new layer of the same title will appear. So you'll have two layers, one of the original and one of the duplicate. So I'm bringing that over and you can see that that disappeared. This duplicate disappeared right next to the original. And now I'm using that same technique that I did with the fishtail to flip that over so it's reversed. And now I'm moving and adjusting it on the other side of my horse's head. It really saves you the time of having to come up with like another picture if you are doing two of like a similar looking thing, like two horns on an animal. All right, so I'm turning the opacity down on both of those horns, and I'm gonna use my eraser tool to erase the parts that I want to show through, like the ear, which I want to be over that horn. So I'm getting close up so I can see the details. I'm getting my eraser tool, and I'm gonna be using that soft edge eraser tool again, and just using a really small one to just quickly kinda of erase that section. Doing the same thing over on the other side because I want to be able to see that horse's head. And I'm going to erase that part of the horn too because I don't want you to really be able to see it kind of in front of his face. All right, so I've got my horns now on my mythical creature. The last thing I decided to add to my mythical creature, I'm just kind of playing around with the layers right now so you can see the different layers that are all together. And the last thing I decided to add to this was wings. And I decided to go with this butterfly wings because they match the colors of my koi fish tail. 
And I figured that that would make it look pretty interesting and a little bit more believable as a mythical creature. So I'm just going to cut out the wing from this butterfly using the pen tool again. Making a selection of the inside of that wing. Selecting the inverse so I have the outside of the wing selected. Clicking on that picture and then hitting backspace to delete the rest of that picture so just the wing remains. I'm going to use the move tool to move that wing to the area that I want it to be attached to the rest of my creature. And then I'm going to be using that same technique, holding down the control button and clicking and dragging with the move tool to create a duplicate of that butterfly wing. So I have two wings using the same picture. So there I go. And this one I want to make a little bit smaller and I want to rotate it a little bit more so it looks like more like it's on the other side of the animal's body. I have to drag that second wing down underneath the picture of the horse so it looks like it's behind it. Okay. And then shrinking it down a little bit because I know that that wing is a little bit farther away from where I'm looking so it would be a little bit smaller. All right, so there's both of my little butterfly wings. I'm just going to use the eraser tool to just erase towards the bottom of that butterfly wing to make it look like it blends into the horse's shoulder a little bit more smooth. There's a bit of a hard line there. I kind of just want to get rid of that hard line and make it look a little bit more blended. That was a bit too much, so I'm going to redo it again using just a slightly smaller brush and just very gently clicking just around the edge of that butterfly wing just to soften the edge just a little bit. And as I zoom out, it looks much more nicely blended now. All right, so this is my finished mythical creature. So what I wanna do now is I would like to add a background. So before I do that, I'm just basically getting rid of all of those shape layers because I don't need them anymore. I'm done with them. I just want the picture layers. And now I'm selecting all of my picture layers and I'm going to merge them together into one layer. So you only want to do this if you are completely done with your design, because once you merge the layers all together, you can no longer go in and edit or change the individual body parts. They're all together now. So making any edits or adjustments or changes from this point will be very difficult. Uh, so don't merge your layers unless you are absolutely sure that you're done. If you want, you can save the file before you merge it and then merge them and save that as a new file so you have one that's merged and one that's not, just in case you want to go back and make any changes. All right, so I'm just going to move this around on my canvas just so I have it kind of centered where I want it to go. And I'm going to be choosing a background. So one of the criteria for you guys for this project is I want you thinking about where this creature lives. So because this uses a lot of aquatic animal parts, I want it to live underwater. So I'm just using that little photo library to find a nice looking picture that would be a fitting background for my creature. I'm going to go ahead and insert it. And I'm just going to use my move tool to click and drag to allow that picture to cover the whole canvas. And once I'm happy with that, I just hit enter. And I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize it just in case there's anything, I, any adjustments I want to make to that background. So now I have my creature floating in an ocean. There's a couple more things that I'm going to be doing to give this creature a little bit more of a realistic shadow to kind of blend it in with its environment. This is called layer effects, and you can do this by doing a couple of different options that I'll show you in just a minute. So first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be adding a gradient layer over the top of my picture to add some shadows and some reflective light to this creature. So I'm showing you how to adjust 
your gradient, gradient editor to make different kinds of gradients. So I'm choosing one that's dark blue to match the ocean. So I'm using the color picker to get that picture, that color now. And the other side I made, I turned the opacity all the way down so it would blend from that dark blue to nothing. So I'm gonna create a new layer on top of my animal while I have the part of my animal selected. And I'm going to drop that gradient over the top. And you can see how it kind of covers that bottom part of the animal with that gradient and looks kind of like a shadow. I didn't like how dark it was at first, so I'm just playing around with moving the gradient tool in different areas to get a little bit of a shadow that I think looks nice. Kind of just doing it and if I don't like it, I'll just undo it and try again until I get something that I like. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm selecting that area of my horse picture. I'm creating a new layer. I'm changing my gradient from a dark blue to a light yellow this time so I can add some reflective light. And this is on a new layer, so that darker shadow was on its own layer, on layer one, and this one's on layer two. So now I'm doing it from the opposite direction to just add what looks like a little bit of like sunlight kind of coming down from the top of the water. That was a little too much, so I just undid it. And I liked how that looked, but I think I wanted it a little bit lighter, so I'm just turning the opacity down on that layer just to make it a little bit more see-through and not so bright. Okay. All right, I'm going to do a few more things to give this image the appearance of having some interesting shadows by doing layer effects. So I'm going to right-click on the outside of my layer and a little, uh, so it actually, actually that's the wrong thing. So I'm going to double click by clicking very quickly twice on the outside of that layer where kind of like underneath where the text is. And you'll get this layer style window that pops up. And you can do different things by clicking different, uh, different options of these layer styles. So stroke is something that adds a line that goes all the way around the outside of the layer that you've selected. Outer glow does like a little kind of like glowy line that goes around the outside. And drop shadow does just what it says. It adds like a little bit of a shadow kind of like right behind where that image that you have selected is. You can adjust the angle to kind of make the shadow appear in different parts of the animal's body. and you just hit OK, and then you will have a little shadow that appears underneath your selected area. So those are just some things that you can play with to kind of make this photo manipulation a little bit more realistic. So once you're done with that, you can see that my original one's a little bit different from the one that I did here. Um, that just kind of happens. It's a little bit difficult to kind of recreate something like that in Photoshop because there are so many different options that you can do but you can definitely play around with things and come up with some pretty interesting and fun looking uh, photo manipulations. So have fun and be sure to contact me if you have any questions or you're confused about anything you just saw. Thanks.